I'm Eric Schumacher Rasmussen, editor of Streaming Media Magazine, and I'm here at NAB 2015 with James Brown, who is manager of solutions engineering for the Tempo uh, product at Globecom. And that may be a product that our readers aren't familiar with, and we'd like to get them more familiar with it. So tell us about Tempo. Well, Tempo is our media platform that is basically distributes video across any network to any user, meaning that we can go across traditional satellite networks, we can go across fixed networks that are internet-based, or we can go across fiber networks. Uh, the platform gives us the ability to reach every user, because it's browser-based, mm -hmm. on desktops, laptops, mobiles, and tablets. So where it's anywhere, anytime, across any network, it's the ubiquitous distribution platform. Okay, now in addition to distributing to all of those platforms, or all of those devices, obviously you have to work very hard on the UI on those devices to make it usable and, and make the whole product easy to use. Can you talk a little bit about what you're doing to uh, encourage ease of use with the Tempo well, product? Well, for ease of use, it really falls into three categories and they're all interrelated to the user experience and the user interface. First and foremost, you want to go into the design to avoid confusion. A, confuse, a confusing UI pushes your users away. The second thing that we, we've adopted is that you have to look at it from the standpoint that if your grandmother were going to use this, you know, in, in the 21st century, it's now the techno nanny, right? Mm -hmm. The techno nana has iPad, iPod, you know, and whatnot that's new and improved technology, right? Mm -hmm. You know, grandma is Skyping, right? right? So if you do that and you get that right, then you've, you've uh, overcome a major hurdle in the complexity. So you've not added more complexity that people will want to, to use. The third thing is, you really need to pay attention to the fact that people go with what they know, mm -hmm. meaning that you can't retrain intuition. So people are already trained to tap, swipe, and pull in devices that they already have. So in our platform, in our services, we use those native tap, pull, mm -hmm. and gestures to implement the products. And that makes ease of use that much easier. Okay, so in addition to a, a user interface that's intuitive for people, what are you doing to drive user engagement? Well, engagement in a media platform for us means that we have to reach out over a distance. And to reach out and touch over a distance, we provide interactivity. With our platform being based browser-based, we're able to reach out and touch the user where their point of contact is mm -hmm. connected on the network. That on the LAN with a desktop, at a laptop at Starbucks, a uh, mobile device tablet or a mobile device uh, phone. Mm -hmm. So that mobility is a part of it. Uh, that engagement, by the fact that you're connected to the network, we know who you are, where you are, mm -hmm. you've been authorized and authenticated, and through interactivity and the connectivity of the network, we're able to, in live streams, offer you not just live, but on demand, so you can select things from a, uh, a, a user guide, right? But doing that, we can push polls, so we can you know, send you questions so that we know that you're listening and things are doing well. We, since you're connected, you get to have analytics back from the field, and then we uh, have the ability to provide interactive text chat, we can provide interactive voice chat. And those things are key features in that on, for large audiences for our enterprise platform, you can do two things. You can do private chats, both text and voice, mm -hmm. to learning agents at the head end so that people are taking your questions. So, so when someone says, we just had this question come in, could the presenter answer this question, right? Now, with the voice chat, what we can do, we can also make that global in that the voice chat can be pushed to the audience so that everyone can hear the voice from the user. And that's, that's, a, that's a big deal. Yeah. Now, with our product that we're uh, 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 doing now with interactivity, our Fieldcaster product, which is a remote contribution product that on the back end has cloud uh, facilities to push out uh, live streams, you can watch the stream. You can. It's all. It's always recorded, so that becomes instantaneous video on demand. But the feature that we're seeing now that's the inter, most interactive is that for performance improvement, you can take a stream, clip portions of the stream, 
make that a playlist and then send that out to a group via email or social mm -hmm. networking. We're finding that that clip feature is, is really powerful from performance enhancement uh, for maintenance and various things like that. For if you're looking at a video, here's, here's the server, here's how to configure the server, here's the clip of the server. Oh, here's the network configuration for that server. Here's that clip, and then you send that clip out. That's instantaneous performance improvement. Right, very cool, very cool. Now, what about in, in your service model, how is, uh, are you integrated with the cloud? Well, in the, in the cloud, we, we have a very powerful cloud-based media platform, and that, that allows us to do several things. Uh, we do all the services, the PaaS, the IaaS, and the, and, and the uh, uh, platform as a service, software as a service, and the infrastructure as a service, that is coupled with our traditional on-premise physical hardware. But what we're finding is that not everybody is jumping into the cloud that fast, but what they want is a hybridation mm. of, of those services with something that they want in-house. For security reasons or whatnot, they have to have the physical machines in their data mm -hmm. centers. So. With our expertise, we're able to hybridize those installations and make that possible. The thing, other thing is about the cloud is that with our Fieldcaster product and it being remote contribution to a cloud server, the cloud makes it so that we can, on the back end, distribute that to enterprise audiences and grow that in scale as, the cloud, as needed. Okay. Now, thinking bigger picture, as streaming media evolves, where is Globecom putting its emphasis? Okay. For what we're doing with our with our powerful cloud-based platform, we're looking to one, you know, serve the future with features on that platform. Mm -hmm. But what we're seeing is that we're seeing a a trend that's pivoting somewhat away from corporate communications and training towards application specific and application specific. Uh, user cases, and those particular user cases are sensitive to areas, say, insurance adjustment, mining maintenance, aircraft maintenance, and first responders. Mm. Uh, what we're finding is that in the insurance adjustment areas where someone would have to walk up on a roof with a ladder, putting them at risk, mm -hmm. that personal risk, because we can find uh, through our Fieldcaster remote video services, hooking that to a drone, puts a drone at risk, not a person. So for risk risk, risk reduction and the uh, accountability and a captured video, that every captured video we make searchable, that high degree of searchability makes it happen faster so it's reusable. Mm -hmm. So now with these features coming on board for these use cases, you've won you're, you're proving in the platform with a hard ROI because there's, there's money you're saving from insurance that you're having to pay for risk assessment, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so the hard ROI makes it so that you're proving in the platform, but not only proving in the platform, but you're proving in the partner who's there to help you succeed in the future. Right, right. And that's Globecom. Very cool. Very cool stuff. I've been talking with James Brown from Globecom. I'm Eric Schumacher-Rasmussen, and coming to you from NAB 2015.